There's been lots to talk about this week uh, when it comes to Eurovision news, stories, rumors, whatever you want to talk about. But I think one thing has really stuck out to me that I think would be interesting to talk about. So we're going to do that today. It's it's a little bit of an unscripted little reaction thing here, whatever you want to call it. I want to talk about uh, the news that came out this week that the MGP in Norway is going to allow performances to use autotune in their performances this year. And it is something that has caused a little bit of stir in the Eurovision fandom. A lot of people is talking about it and I understand that. Because it's not something we've ever seen before, at least not to my knowledge, it's not something we've seen in a national final before. Which makes sense, of course. In the Eurovision Song Contest, auto-tuning is not allowed. There has been cases over the years where vocal manipulation has been uh, allowed. But even back in 2000, uh, when the Fly on the Wings of Love used a little bit of vocal modulation, there was complaints from some delegations that this was against the rules. Now, the news was uh, published on uh, VG, uh, which is a Norwegian news outlet. And the news comes from head of a delegation and head of the production of MGP. It mentions in the article that this is being done mainly because that this is the way that the industry is moving forward and that autotune has been used in different live productions over the years. And that's definitely true. Programs like The Voice and X Factor and programs in this kind of category has been using autotune for many years, I believe. And it has always been kind of like, you know, a topic of discussion, especially for those shows as well, because it is talent competitions, a lot of them. You know, a program like The Voice, it is about having the best vocal of them all, right? So for many people, myself included, it doesn't make a lot of sense that auto-tune is allowed. Of course, there is more, and the article mentioned that as well. Of course, it, it takes more to be a good vocalist than just being able to be pitch perfect every single time. But it is still something that matters, I would say. So I do get the argument. I get the argument that this is where the industry is going, most likely also because this is something that artists taking part in a contest like this will be requesting. You know, this current day and age, we do see a lot of ex-talent show competitors taking part in national finals all over Europe. And if your first meeting with the industry was a program where you were allowed to use autotune, I can imagine that some artists and some managers would request that, would request it to be a part of the show. Of course, with Eurovision, a Eurovision pre-selection show, it's a little bit of a different situation because in Eurovision it is not allowed and we already know the, the rules for next year's Eurovision. So we already know that it isn't going to be allowed this year, which of course means that if you, like NRK has chosen to do this time, you are allowing artists to use autotune. It means that if you cannot get them to do a pitch perfect performance in the national selection, but they end up winning, you're going to have to figure out what you should do to help them like train their vocals so they can actually do it in Eurovision. And I think that's honestly one of the things that I find most interesting and most weird with making a decision like this, because I can understand wanting to move forward in the industry and I can understand artists and managers wanting that to be the case but MGP is not its own show it's a pre-selection show for the Eurovision Song Contest and in general and I know Norway has done this before so I guess to that extent it doesn't surprise me that much but I just do not get why have a pre-selection show have different rules than the actual show. I understand that MGP, of course, is more than a pre-selection show. It is a Norwegian television production, and not every single song gets to win and go to Eurovision, of course, so there is a lot of, you know, trying to focus on every single one of the acts, making sure that everyone gets something out of participating in this event, and you want it to be a national show, you want it to have national elements, but it's the same thing that we've seen before with NRK, where they've had, they've had performances with up to, like, 10 or 20 people on stage, which obviously isn't allowed in Eurovision, and they know they're gonna have to change up the staging when you get to Eurovision. 
And I just don't understand why you kind of need to do that, why you need to have these different rules in place, because it just means that the thing you do in the national selection, you cannot just take everything you've learned and just kind of perfect it for your vision. Sometimes you have to come up with a completely different idea. And it's kind of the same case here, right? If you are having an artist who are going to re rely very much on this auto-tune, who's going to rely very much on vocal modulation, you're going to end up in a situation where when they go to Eurovision, you're going to have to change some things up. I think a good example I can do to kind of show why this might sometimes actually be an issue is the whole uh, thing with the pre-recorded backing vocals. Because a lot of national finals have used that over the past couple of years, even before it was a rule in Eurovision. And there are some songs who sounded great in their national final because you were able to build vocals on top of each other to create a bigger atmosphere. When you then had to do that live and you had to do it with only a handful of backing vocalists because you're only allowed to have so and so many people on stage at Eurovision, the songs fell flat. And that's one of those situations where I'm like, I don't really understand who this benefited because yes, it may have been easier for the production back at home to not have backing vocalists on stage, but you ended up with a product who did well in its home country, but didn't do as well in Eurovision. One, one that comes to mind, because I'm sure some people would like examples. One that comes to mind for me is I Can't Go On uh, from Sweden back in 2017. That performance felt extremely flat, in my opinion at least, on the Eurovision stage, because he wasn't able to do the falsetto without the backing vocals that he had in Melodie Festival. So I, I do really wonder if this is actually going to hurt the artist winning MGP more than it's gonna benefit anything. But I think there is also another side of this and I think what we've just talked about with the pre-recorded backing vocals that's kind of like the same deal you know we had that national finals for a number of years and all of a sudden it was put into Eurovision and I don't believe I just want to put that very clearly here I don't believe for a second the argument that this was done for corona reasons because obviously we still have the rule this year despite to my knowledge, at least, there are not really being any plans to do any Corona, Corona specific plan A, A B, C, whatever we did in uh, in 2021, and we sorted it last year as well. It's just part of it now that pre-recorded backing vocals is allowed. And yes, it has gained some advantages, but it certainly has also gained some disadvantages. We certainly have artists now going to Eurovision who just doesn't really have the vocal capacity, who are able to go on and have a good enough performance, I guess you can say, because they can rely on the backing vocals uh, behind them. And call me an old man, but I just don't think that's very cool at all. I like the idea of Eurovision being a live event. But I also do understand the other camp saying that well it's not a vocal contest it's a song contest it should be the song that's in focus and I get that if you want your song to sound as much as much like the studio version as possible of course you want those backing vocals because backing vocals especially in pop music and especially these days is such an essential part of what you're doing a lot of artists really work with the backing vocals to create this atmosphere and you cannot really do that if you can't do them pre-recorded and you can't have choirs or like five or ten layers however many they have i'm not a music expert so i don't know a lot about this I just know that it's a trend and it's something that a lot of artists are working with. And you know, as annoying as this is, as much as I feel like an old man who liked the days when stage designs were unique and it wasn't just all LED panels, who liked the days when you had the backing vocalists on stage and it was part of the act, I understand that Eurovision as a contest have to move forward. It just has to, because it's such an expensive and such a big event that obviously countries want this to be a success, and they want it to be a success domestically. And making a change like this when it comes to this auto-tune in MGP may be what it takes to make the contest even more popular in Norway, because, and he, do, he does mention in the art article, right? People are getting more and more used to people having pitch perfect performances in something like The Voice, in something like X Factor, in something like Got Talent or whatever. So it is way more noticeable these days when you have a 
bad vocal day and you know we can all have bad days we can all have little notes going wrong when we perform and i think for some artists it's just not that fun if you know if you are a fan favorite going into a contest and all of a sudden you lose just because you had one bad note in there i get it and you know what i do think eventually this rule will come into the eurovision song contest and yes there will definitely be people that will complain about that and i think that's good i think we should complain as a fandom if there's something we aren't happy about and i think it's super healthy that we're having this discussion right now about this auto tune when it comes to mgp because there's a lot of interesting things to talk about here i would definitely love to hear more artists point of view from this i would like to hear their uh, arguments for this auto tune because I do think it's, it is, like I said in the beginning, it is because this is where the industry is moving towards. But I get why people are upset. Not only because change is scary, but also because of the fact that it does feel like that we're taking less and less of these live elements out of Eurovision. And it is what makes Eurovision special. It's a live event. It's live people singing live. So many shows all over Europe these days just have people lip singing when they go on a show because everything, there's such a big focus on trying to make it look perfect, make it look like a music video. Every live performance should be bigger and better than ever. And sometimes you just sacrifice the live vocal because it becomes too difficult to do. It's one of the things that really makes Eurovision stand out and it's Eurovision tradition, right? But the orchestra was also a Eurovision tradition that went away and of course there are still people desperately wanting it back. But at the end of the day, most people have accepted it. And it's the same with the backing vocals. We're on year three now having the pre-recorded backing vocals being allowed. And I don't see a lot of people talking about it anymore. And of course, this is also just the hardcore fans talking. The people who are just tuning in on that Saturday evening watching the grand final of the Eurovision Song Contest. They're not gonna notice and they're not gonna care. And they are still, I would like to believe at least, the biggest market. But complaining and talking about it is good. Because obviously if there's enough people who are against this, it might mean that the EBU would definitely not consider doing it right away, but maybe waiting a few years. So I think that's what I wanted to say, really. I think I made it pretty clear, but in case I didn't, my personal opinion is definitely I don't like having auto-tune in this. I think it's a slippery slope down to not actually having people who are able to sing on the contest. I don't want all these people who can just, like, pitch correct their way out of everything i think it i think it ruins it especially for people who have raw talent and something they want to show but i guess i do understand it from an industry perspective i understand it it's just a shame that that's where we've headed and like i said people you know hardcore fans of the voice hardcore fans of x factor they have been complaining about this for years and there are still people complaining and there are still like old-fashioned musicians or whatever you want to call it who still complain about this being the case who think that autotune shouldn't be a thing in all of these competitions. Who knows what the future will bring but for now I think in our case they're the first ones doing it but if they have success with it I could imagine we will be seeing it in national finals moving forward. But that's what I think. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments if you want. Subscribe if you want more Neon Pavilion. Like the video if you enjoyed and then I'll hopefully see you guys very soon.